kind of thinking of an entrepreneur is because somebody else said it was right doesn't make it right, right? Larry, the country is losing $200 billion a year. $200 billion. This interview is very interesting. What you're about to see is the late Larry King talking to Donald J. Trump before he even thought about becoming a president, running for president, right, for the office. I want you to hear how Trump speaks. It goes to show that Trump hasn't changed very much. He's been complaining about the same issues that are plaguing our society today and the condition of our economy. It goes to show Trump is, is very real. He's a real, real man. What you see is what you get. Even at this age in 1987, we're talking about over something 37 years ago. Yet Trump was talking like this. I was like, this is mind blowing stuff. And the same things he's complaining about here in this video is happening again today. Nothing new under the sun. This is why he felt the need to get into politics and do something about it. Okay. So we're going to check out this video here. Enjoy the content. Link in the description below. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. Share your thought and perspective with me. I want to hear from you. Let's get into it. Or is he just calling a bluff? Are you a Republican, Donald? I'm a Republican, yes. So if there were politics, it would be as a Republican? It would be, I guess, as a Republican, but I don't see that there will be pro right. politics. Why the ad then? I mean, you said you wanted to say it. There's a lot of ways you can say things. I guess an ad is one way. You could have called up shows like this who would have been trying to have you come on. Why now? Well, it was very easy. I was tired, and I think a lot of people are tired of watching other countries ripping off the United States. This mm. is a great country. They laugh at us. Behind our backs, they laugh at us because of our own stupidity and the, the leaders. I mean, what we have, we have a Persian Gulf situation. You saw what happened today. Billions and billions of dollars are being spent on getting oil for Japan, and they're mm. not paying anything for it. Essentially, they're paying nothing for it. We have tankers going back and forth that our men are protecting, losing their lives. I mean, they're losing their lives, Larry. We're spending billions and billions on protection, and those tankers are going over to Japan. Uh, it's, it's just preposterous. I watched the Kuwaiti oil minister the other day laughing as he was explaining how much money they intend to make with the Bridgeton, which has been a total disaster, the Bridgeton. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I said to myself, isn't that a shame? He's talking about how much money they're going to make, and here we are. He's smiling and laughing. Why don't we get some of it? Why is it that we're protecting? We have frogmen, we have helicopters, we have aircraft carriers, and all sorts of ships all over the Persian Gulf so that this man and his little group can make a lot of money. I think it's ridiculous. Amazing stuff, man. Same issues. The economy, the way things are being run, it's a problem. It was then. It still is today. But I want you to notice what Larry King went on to say, the late Larry King went on to say. Oh, he's been established. This is how he's always been done. This is the establishment. Watch this. One of the reasons we say we're doing it is because we've been doing it, and that all previous presidents have endorsed doing it. I guess the kind of thinking of an entrepreneur is because somebody else said it was right doesn't make it right, right? Larry, the country is losing $200 billion a year. $200 billion. This country cannot continue to lose $200 billion. Japan is one of the wealthiest machines ever created. Saudi Arabia, and it's not, hey, let me tell you, I'm a big beneficiary of Japan. They buy my apartments in spades. They're fine people. But they must be, they la they're laughing to themselves as to what's happening over here. We're not kidding ourselves. They're laughing to themselves, Larry, as to what's happening uh, in this country. Uh, but, uh, Donald, uh, a lot of people feel the way you feel. And a lot of people maybe with as much money, or certainly some people with as much money feel the way you feel. Why did you go public? Because somebody had to, Larry. I watch it again, and it's a very important point. Japan is a money machine. Saudi Arabia is a money machine. Kuwait, these are money machines, the greatest ever created. The United States is, if it were a corporation, it would be bankrupt. It's losing $200 billion a year. For years now, it's been losing that. What right do we have to go out and defend? Why aren't these countries, these wealthy money machines, paying us for the defense of their freedom and their nations? Mm. Why aren't mm. they paying us? We are kind of... Same problems today. Same problems today. I mean, 200 and something billion a year back then. Psh, it's much worse now. So, you know, the amazing thing is, <laughs> it's just, it's one thing you can identify the problem, but it's another thing to have the heart to confront it 
and address it and do something about it. I think that's what Donald Trump decided to do. That's what makes him very special. A lot of people can complain about what's wrong with this country, but very few will step up to the plate to try to fix it. And many times, many of them who said, I'm going to go in and try to do something about it, they become part of the corruption themselves. They end up perpetuating the same problem that they were supposedly complaining of before they got into the power. They got, they got, they got into office. Once they get into office, the power gets into their head and they themselves become part of the problems. He, he's doing things differently. Well, you notice the way the establishment is responding to Donald Trump. You can understand why. Look at the way he's addressing the economy. They don't like that very much. He's sticking his hands in their pockets. That's the problem. Let's keep listening. Kind of the world's keeper, are we not? I don't believe we should be. I think Japan paying us. We are kind of the world's keeper, are we not? I don't believe we should be. I think Japan should certainly make a contribution. Japan is, is one of the reasons they're so successful is they don't have to worry about defense because why should they worry about defense when the United States will do it for nothing? I mean, it's crazy. Saudi Arabia, I mean, you saw what happened with Saudi Arabia. We're going through the Gulf. We have old-fashioned, obsolete uh, uh, minesweepers. We ask Saudi Arabia for the use of their minesweepers, which are the best made, the most modern, the best, and they say no. Who are they to tell us no? We're not going to give you our minesweepers. It's ridiculous. They're only there. They're only there for the sake of us, as far as that's concerned. We are protective of Saudi Arabia. They should pay for that. Are we going to be hearing more from Mr. Trump on issues like this as we go along? I really don't know, Larry. This is an issue that's been bothering me. It's been bothering a lot of people that I know. And I think it's an issue that had to be brought out to the fore. The, the concept of America financing and paying and losing lives for countries that won't even allow us to use their ships. And these are the countries that in 24 hours they'd be wiped off the face of the earth if it weren't for America. It's ridiculous. Yes, indeed, it is ridiculous. <laughs> we, listen, we haven't learned much. We're still making the same mistakes today, right? And I think this is the kind of issues that Donald Trump saw. He said, I'm going to run for office. I'm going to do something about it, right? When Obama heard that Donald Trump was going to run for office, you know, he made fun of Trump. President Obama will go down as perhaps the worst president in the history of the United States, exclamation point, at real Donald Trump. <laughs> well, at real Donald Trump, at least I will go down as a president. But didn't Trump eventually win the White House? Didn't Obama and his wife had to come in and turn over the keys to, the, to, to Trump. Well, I just had uh, the opportunity to have an excellent conversation with President-elect Trump. Uh, it was wide ranging. We talked about we now are going to uh, want to do everything we can to help you succeed, because if you succeed, then the country succeeds. I'm with you many, many more times in the Good. future. Thank you, sir. And again, uh, Trump is making a massive return in such a way we've never seen before. His numbers are way up, even though they're trying to keep him in a court in New York with all this shenanigan going on there. Yet the man is still looking good. New CNN polling showing Donald, Trump's, Donald Trump maintains his advantage over President Joe Biden in a national survey. And the interesting numbers also suggesting that absence is making the heart grow fonder. Uh, you and people like you build low income, medium income housing. Well, as far as building housing is concerned and low-income housing, I've built a lot of it. I haven't mm -hmm. recently, but I've built a lot of it. I built senior citizens housing and beautiful, beautiful housing. I built low-income housing and I'm very proud of it. The policies of the government right now just don't allow it because really what's happened by the tax incentives that were taken away and by the lack of federal programs. You used to have federal programs, you don't have them anymore. And it really doesn't allow it to be done on any economic basis. And it's a pretty rough situation. I mean, you just don't have subsidized housing, low income, moderate income housing, and it's a really big problem. And if, if they did, you would do it? I would absolutely love to do it. I'd be honored to do it. I used to do it. I mean, people think of me in terms of Trump Tower and all the other jobs. I'm just as proud. I mean, you folks don't talk about it because maybe it's not as interesting to some people. <laughs> I am, frankly, just as proud of all the low income and the senior citizen housing I built. Well, well you can see how this is transferred into his politics as well. He. Um, the idea of building and creating things has been part of the reason why Trump has also been successful in politics. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think a lot of what's going on in politics has to be this complicated. I know there's dirty business going on there because there's a lot of corruption in politics and so is corruption everywhere else, right? Corruption in 
society, in business, and so corruption, and even in religion. But the thing is, it's just that I think the reason why Trump was successful is because he was able to identify the problems and having the mindset that he has to do something in fixing and building, he just went about fixing the economy in a way that some people got really upset. And they said, we got to do something about this man. What I love about Donald Trump is the fact that he speaks from his heart. The same issues that he is addressing today in the political campaign were the, are the same things that still he was talking about then. It's not like Trump has changed very much. He hasn't really changed. His position has been abundantly clear. The man has been who he is. <laughs> like very From the very beginning, this is what Trump sounded like. I don't see any difference between his speech then and his speech now. Now, you can say he's a little bit more brass, he's older now, and so on. I can understand, well, the media is crazy. Like, you turn on CNN, all they talk about is Trump. They they live, and, and, and it's like they don't have a network if they're they, if Trump. I don't know what they're going to do when Trump passes away, when the Lord give him rest. I don't know what they're going to do. What's going to happen to their to their business model? <laughs> they're running a negative, negative type of program where it is all focused on what Trump is doing wrong, what's happening in Trump in the courthouse, whether Trump is going to prison. This is not a mugshot. This is jail. And Donald Trump is terrified. You've got to believe just by his his issues with odors and, and smells. The idea that Donald Trump actually would want to go to jail is ridiculous. He doesn't even like to stay in a hotel. I think That's to right. make a point, to prove a point, put him in the clink. Oh, why not? Put him in the clink. I don't want this to sound like I'm doing wishful thinking. Yes. <laughs> But which prison would be best? <laughs> I, one. I, I want, I would give, I would give you Michael. Well, that's what, I, that's what I got. Number one, I'm okay if he goes to Alcatraz and they reopen it. What about Guantanamo Bay? <laughs> but you hear his perspective is that I want to fix the problems and I know how I can fix it. You understand? So this is the perspective that Trump had then. That's what he has now. And I admire that. I think that was amazing. And again, Despite what the, they want us to believe when it comes to Donald Trump as far as certain things in verbiage and language and mean tweets and so on and character, I can understand that, but are you listening? There goes a man who loves this country and wants to do something to fix it. Can we get on board with that? That's what I'm on board with. Much more could be said. I want to hear your thought and perspective. Yo, yo, put your comment in the description below. I'm going to put a link also so that to the content creator so you can do and show, show them some love on Twitter. Yeah. What do you think when it comes to Donald Trump? How do you position yourself? Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. Much more could be said. Until next time. Have a good one. Bye.